start with Keyshawn Gervais is a hockey player from Camsack, Saskatchewan, who now plays in the Western Hockey League for the Portland Winter Hawks, Hawks and has a prominent TikTok vibe profile. <laughs> if you have any questions for Keyshawn, please put them in the comment section or the question card. Uh, what was it like to play for Mike Johnston? Um, it was fun. Definitely, uh, I grew up as a Penguins fan, so um, I remember what. Sorry, I remember when um, Dan Bilesma got fired and Mike uh, Mike was hired. So um, when I got drafted there, they announced him as the head coach, and I was super excited to be coached by a National Hockey League coach. What did you? How did you feel when the WHL season was canceled? Um, I was definitely heartbroken. Me and my teammates, uh, we were crushed because. Um, you know, we were in first place. We were making a pretty big uh, playoff push, and um, you know, we we had high expectations. So, um, definitely, when the season got canceled, it kind of happened so fast, and most of us were heartbroken. We had to leave so soon, and uh, we were just crushed. But at the same time, we uh, we were concerned about everyone else's safety. What are fans like in Portland? Um, Portland fans are the best fans in the league, hands down, in my opinion. Um, sometimes we have about 10,000 fans a game. Um, we, uh, you see them in the concourse. They, uh, they always want pictures. They're passionate about their hockey. Um, you know, and it's always loud in the building. So, you know, it's always, uh, it's always fun to play in Portland. Uh, ask for more questions for Keisha. Lots of people are joining, so please ask. Um... <laughs> Did you comb your hair for this? This is a question we always ask. <laughs> Did I comb my hair? No, this is my bad head. Um, I usually wake up and if it looks uh, if it looks fine, I just keep it the way it is. Um, but if I'm going to an outing, I usually obviously shower. I don't even comb my hair. I, I no, that's I just, the way to go, buddy. I just wake up and I'm barely comb my hair. I don't even touch it. It's a mess. It's a mess. Yeah, man. Like, look at this. <laughs> Favorite sport other than hockey? Um, lacrosse. I uh, when I was about fourteen, I kind of decided hockey over lacrosse, but I was probably better at lacrosse than I was hockey. Um, but <laughs> you don't uh, you don't make as good of a wage, and you don't get paid as well as you do uh, being a professional lacrosse player. So I saw more opportunities uh, playing hockey. Uh, ever thought about going back to lacrosse if hockey doesn't work out? Yeah, honestly, I did, but now that I think of it, I haven't played in about a year, so I uh, I kind of gave up the dream of lacrosse, and uh, now all I play is um, pick up with my buddies. Did you see the Biz Nasty audi audition, audition audition for the uh, Vancouver NLL team? <laughs> I did. It was uh, it was a video I watched over and over. It was pretty funny. Uh, seeing Biz try play professional lacrosse, getting hit pretty hard um, by all of his teammates and getting chirped by everybody. So it was it was pretty funny. Yeah, I thought it was I thought it was a good video. Have you met Biz? I haven't. That's one of the people that I really want to meet. Actually, he's uh. He's a uh, part of one of my favorite podcasts, Spit and Chicklets, and uh, he's he's somebody I definitely like to go out for uh, dinner with just to pick his brain a little bit. I forget who asked this, but someone said, "What's your best chirp?" <laughs> um, depends on the player, kind of thing. Uh, they um, they can chirp me about a lot of things, so I I tend to try stay away from chirping the wrong people so but keeping it pg let's just say i tell the person they suck at hockey when sometimes they're really good just to get in their head yeah. uh sony strong uh, 3919 asks how did you get to play for the portland winter hawk um in when you're in bantam in the whl they do a draft and i went from house hockey to bounce and double a not thinking that I'd get drafted but I had a really good year with that team we ended up winning two uh championships and going on to westerns we have um guys on that team who play in the WHL and um 
you know, we're, we're kind of a tight knit group. So I ended up getting drafted to Portland in the ninth round, um, about four years ago. So I, uh, I went there, then I played two years of midget, and then I played a year of junior with Yorkton and ended up making the Portland Winterhawks this year. Uh, we did not we did not even realize, but it was the WHL draft. What what did it feel like to get drafted? Um, it was a dream come true. Uh, my whole life I've always wanted to get drafted by a WHL team, didn't matter where to, but um it was a bonus going to Portland. They're uh they're a high class organization. We play in uh we play half of our home games in the NBA arena where the Trailblazers play. So um it's uh it's always nice being able to see a big crowd like that and play on a big NHL like ice. So I definitely love Portland and I can see uh I can see myself anywhere else. Uh did you know Revo? Uh like Ryan Reeves and Mark Stone actually were both late round ba- bantam drafts. Uh, I did not know that. Um, that's kind of surprising. Uh, I met both of them actually in Winnipeg when I was on a show called Hit the Ice, and they're that's honestly extremely surprising. Knowing that Stone and Reeves uh, having the careers they're having are uh, late WHL draft picks, so I did not know that. What's the show Hit the Ice? Um, Hit the Ice is a TV show on um, APTN. It's um, conducted of the top Métis and Aboriginal midget age hockey players. And you go there for a camp for a month to play two uh, teams made up of Manitoba players. And it's kind of a development camp to get you exposure to, um, it gives you exposure to different teams around Canada. And you get to meet a bunch of NHL players. So I got to meet Travis Hamanick, Mark Stone, Nolan Patrick, Ryan Reeves, Brooks Like, like I got to get a picture with a bunch of those guys. So um, this was in, I think, 2017, and it aired in 2018. So um, it's definitely an experience I'll remember for the rest of my life. Oh, do you get to watch NBA sometimes? Um, yeah, so for my birthday, my billets got me um, tickets to the Raptors versus Trailblazers game. And I've never seen an NBA game live before, so um, it was definitely an unbelievable birthday present. I play basketball, so I love uh, NBA. So my favorite team is Celtics. Oh, geez, not a Raptors fan, hey? I, I'm just he just goes wherever team is winning. I don't <laughs> really care about. Not a basketball guy. Not a basketball guy, hockey guy. Yeah, oh, good, good uh, choice. I don't know if I'm saying this right, but sorry if I get your name wrong. Landon Baldwin asks, if you have advice for players who don't get drafted to the WHL. Um, Yeah, for sure. Uh, honestly, the WHL draft doesn't uh, doesn't mean much. All it means is that you're assigned to a team. So um, there's benefits of not getting drafted. So if you don't get drafted, you can kind of pick and choose what team invites or you have to pick and choose what invite you want to go to. Um, you get to choose, uh, like wherever you want to go. So if you work hard enough and put in the work, you can definitely make the WHL without getting drafted. I have a lot of friends who've done it and, you know, as long as you put the work in and you're serious about it, you can definitely make the WHL without getting drafted. Uh, does, do you expect your teammates to show up, uh, here to chirp you today? I did. I see, uh, I saw a few of them join. So, uh. I'm uh, surprised that none of them have uh, thrown some chirps out there yet. It might happen still. You never know. Yeah. It's only, like, it's only 14 minutes in. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> maybe they're afraid. Maybe. Jeez. Maybe. I've seen some of the fight videos. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I'm a gentle giant. I can't even call myself a giant. I'm 5'8", so. What did you want to be when you were younger? Um, I've always wanted to be a hockey player. Uh, it's run in the family. My older brother was, uh, um, he was an SGHL champion. He's a national, like the RBC cup champion. So I kind of wanted to follow in his footsteps. Um, my dra- my dad was drafted to the, uh, he was drafted to the Prince Albert Raiders in the second round. So our family, all we've really known was hockey. Um, 
so yeah, I've always wanted to be an NHL player. It's been in my blood. I remember skating on the backyard rink out here. So yeah, I've always wanted to be a hockey player, and I've also wanted to run a business if that uh, if that was ever an option. Uh, Josh, you I think he's your teammate, Joshua Red Iron. I don't know if I'm saying that right. <laughs> that's uh, that's my best friend. I'm he says <laughs> he said to you, "I'm too nice to throw to you." <laughs> he's lying. Don't listen to him. <laughs> I don't. I have no idea. Let's go. Um. Sony Strong asks, "What is, what is, is your his favorite, your favorite Portland rink to play in?" Moda Center, hundred percent. Um. When you play in the VMC, it's a uh, it's, it's a historic rink, but um, playing in the Moda, it feels like you're playing in an NHL rink because uh. That that building is made for NBA games, so when they transform it to a hockey rink, it's just like an NHL rink. Um, you know, when we have 10,000 fans um, cheering, going nuts when we score a goal, it's the best feeling ever. So um, when I did get to play in the Moto, it was definitely uh, some of my best hockey memories. Uh, I don't know if I'm si- Okay, if I don't say names right, just don't blame me. Uh, K. He, E Man 29 su- said, Would you suggest kids go to the CJHL? Um, yeah, I went to the CJHL. I played in the, uh, in the SJ. Um, it's definitely a good, uh, a good league to play in. Um, especially if you want to go college, that's where a lot of players go, um, to go college. And, um, they, uh, they run, they run a really good program there. When I played in York, and um, you know, I was treated right. They uh, they prepared me to play in the WHL. So um, some people might think if you go CJHL, having a um, CHL dream, like playing in the WHL or OHL, that it can get kind of lost. But um, if you work hard enough, you can definitely use the CJHL uh, as an outlet for college or for the CHL. Uh, Chad Cromer says uh best memory from each eight hti miss you bud uh chad chad was our goalie hit the ice um my best memory at hit the ice we went dragging boating um that's where you put about five people yeah Yeah, so we went dragging boating and we were having a race and before the race the instructor said you guys, there's a very low chance you guys will tip the boat. Just be careful. So we were racing, and we were kind of in last place. And Talon Thomas, a guy who was at Hit the Ice, one of my close friends, he uh, he said a funny joke. I forget what he said, but next thing you know, everyone was laughing, and nobody was really concentrating on paddling the boat. And we all started rocking, and then we all fell in, especially even the cameraman. So we ruined, like, a $2,000 camera. And we got some pretty good footage of it on uh, one of the episodes. So um, all of us walked back to uh, the um, kind of the boardwalk area, soaking wet. And um, it was it was definitely funny, and all of us had a good laugh over it. Uh, Jack? Uh, oh, yeah. Nathan Andrew 14 says he hopes to see if in Portland if he gets drafted. Yeah, um, I uh, draft these today in the WHL, actually. So I've kind of been reaching out to um, to some players who got drafted by our team. So um, if you do get drafted by Portland, it's uh, it's a uh, best organization in the WHL, in my opinion. They treat you like an NHL player. The staff has been, like, three-quarters of them have been with NHL teams, coach, trained. Um, so they definitely treat you like a pro there, and I hope to see you at camp. Jackson Wesley nineteen asks if his what if, if his weight oh wait if his height if your height has affected you getting into the WHL. Honestly, I would say no because nowadays the game is relied on speed and skill, so you don't have to be a six foot five giant like Seattle has. Um, so if you're short, you uh, your chances are kind of not higher but they're higher than what it would have been so um i'm just barely five nine um so that's not 
tall at all. I think I'm one of the shortest, if not the shortest player on my team. And, you know, as long as you have that speed and you know what you're doing, it's, uh, it's definitely not going to hold you back too much other than puck battles with guys who are six, six and, um, just stuff like that. So if you're short nowadays, it's not really an issue. Jackson Wesley 19 asks about your thoughts on Connor Bedard getting exceptional status. I think it's great for the WHL. Um, you know, they haven't had a player that's had exceptional status before. And, you know, um, there's guys like Shane Wright, John Tavares, Connor McDavid, who've gotten that honor. So um, I think it's good for the league and, the fact that he went to Regina where you guys were living, um, it's a good opportunity for people in Regina who don't have um, as big as a fan base as some other teams. So that'll attract in more fans and um, it'll be good for uh, for the team and for the league. How does it feel to play with the coach slash GM who keeps your, his players and does not make a lot of trades? It's awesome for sure. Um, I was a little nervous today on draft day seeing uh, – seeing players get traded. Um, one of my close friends, Rowdy Ross, he got traded from Seattle to Regina. So um, a trade can happen at any second. So I was kind of, I was kind of nervous to see if my name would pop up on a trade. So um, it was definitely nerve wracking, but playing for Mike, um, he's really loyal to his players. He, um, he wants to run a tight knit group that everybody, um, everybody kind of gets along. No, uh, no drama on the team. He wants a team that plays his way, plays fast, plays straight line. And um, it's really good seeing uh, the knowledge he brought from the NHL level to uh, to the WHL. And I think he's developed me into a much better player than I was last year. Braden Blondu says, you you are always, you always say you're a bench warmer on your, and you're on the fourth line. Is that true? Um, I, yeah, um, this year I kind of played that role. So I kind of just adjusted to it and made fun of myself for it a little bit just to get some laughs out of people. So, um, I'd say I was on the fourth line. Yeah. And sometimes I was in the stands eating hot dogs, watching the team. So, um, I definitely embraced that role this year, but next year I definitely look for, uh, I feel like I have a bigger role in the team coming. Uh, thank Jimmy Cortman eleven. Oh, oh, thank you for, thank you Jimmy Cortman eleven for, or country man for watching, watching. He's a season ticket holder holder for Portland and has Keyshawn's jersey. Oh wow! I think I've uh, I've seen him at a few games. Seeing uh seeing somebody with my jersey on, um is definitely probably the greatest feeling ever. So. Um, whenever I see somebody with a sign with my name on it or a jersey of mine, I definitely, in warm ups, will toss him a puck. And there's this one kid this year that was a complete loyal fan. Um, we had a tradition in warm ups, actually. We fist bumped every, uh, every chance we got. And then towards the end of the year, I ended up giving him, tossing a stick over the glass room in warm ups. So, yeah. And now on to TikTok. Oh, well boy, here we go. <laughs> Here, what was your favorite, what was your inspiration for your TikTok posts that look like illusions? Um, my transition videos, um, I saw, I got sent from our media rep, actually, a video of somebody doing a backflip and his clothes changed. Actually, one second, let me turn on my light. And I, uh, I saw that and I thought it was the coolest thing ever, so I was like, well, I can do a backflip and I might as well just try it out. And, you know, as, uh, as time went on, I started getting more creative with them. So I, um, I just found joy in doing it when I had spare time. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of just my trainer or sorry, our media person sent it to me and was like, Hey, you should try this out. And I was like, all right. And then it ended up, uh, I on TikTok I was like, okay, hey, this is the last one I'm doing because they're none of them are doing well. So um after I posted that video it ended up getting four million views. So um after that I was just like, Well, I guess I have something here. Uh how long did it take to learn TikTok? Uh, about a week. Um it was kinda like Vine. 
So I was like, all right, this is just a bunch of videos. These ones are recommended for me. This is what people like. So yeah, I guess this is what I'm going to be rolling with. It's like a longer time for us to figure out YouTube. I think um, easier than YouTube. Yeah, definitely. Um, actually, YouTube's kind of easy because you just hit the upload button. Put yeah. Your up, so yeah, TikTok's definitely more complicated. Were you surprised at how quickly the massive one took off? Yeah, um, I remember we were going to, I posted that video after practice, and we were going to a family supper, and my phone just kept blowing up for some reason. I was like, what is going on? And then in an hour, it had 10,000 views, and I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. And then two hours later, it had 100,000, and then a million, and then it just kept going on, so... It was definitely exciting, so I was I was just like, "Whoa, this is this is insane." What has been the weirdest thing to happen because of TikTok? There was this person in the Bronx, New York, who was drawing pictures of me. Um, very very weird pictures of me, if I can keep it like that. So, just stuff like that. But there's been positives. Um, people come up to me in like different towns we go play hockey. So. There's been positives and negatives. Uh, Jimmy Countryman, uh, Jimmy underscore Countryman underscore 11 asks, why do you wear tw number 20 and why? I got asked that question a lot, and honestly, there's no story behind it. I went to camp, and honestly, guys who they know are going to make the team usually get to pick their number, and I was kind of a dark horse. They didn't know if I was going to make the team past preseason or what was going on, so... They gave me number 20, and I didn't really have a say. I was just happy to get a number on the team. So um, I got number 20, and the past player at war number 20 had 126 points the year before. So um, I was, I just basically said, hey, so I'm not going to be doing that. Uh, <laughs> but I, I just got number 20 and just rolled with it. But next year, um, I plan on <laughs> trying to make a deal with – my best friend on the team, Gabe Clawson, to get number 16 from him. Um, do, you, do you know about the story about the mysterious number 22? I don't. What's that story? So uh, it's, so a, it's player a player who is, who is never, never identified, identified, but they expect, they expect he, he do, does doesn't, 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 oh wait, oh wait, Identified, identified, but he but does, he does not, not burn, burn his NCAA eligibility. Oh, jeez. That's weird. I've never heard of that. That's kind of crazy. Uh, you typically wear 16, right? Yeah. Good. Tell us about the teddy bear, teddy bear clothing. How did it start? And where did the proceeds go to? Teddy bear, I started it um, February, late February. It was just... Uh, an idea I've always wanted to create a clothing line and I didn't know really what to base it around when I was younger so on um, dealing with mental health myself I knew it was a great opportunity um, because mental health clothing lines and mental health in general aren't really talked about much so um, as soon as I found that opportunity uh, and me and my buddy talked about it uh, he gave me the idea so I, I kind of rolled with it and it's taken off and um, 10% of every sale is donated to mental health societies around Canada um, and around Saskatchewan, going to ones that kind of need it more than most. So um, I think we're at $8,500 in sales in the past month and a half. And actually, this is on, this is the logo. And I actually have a bunch of orders I have to get to later. So it's been a success, but it's also been really busy. Uh, uh, how do people buy the teddy bear clothing? And can you message us the link so we can put it on our YouTube version? Yeah, so right now I'm just selling locally, kind of um, in my Campsack area, Yorkton area, and uh, kind of Regina area. And my plan was to release it this uh this month or sorry this summer and i um i have a website but i'm not releasing it until um this summer when everything's ready to be sold so um 
the website will be teddyware.ca and everything will be up and running this summer. Okay. Uh, when you are closer to releasing it, maybe we can hook up then. Yeah, yeah 100%. I'm, uh, I'm down with that. Brayden Blondu says, do you like playing in Victoria? What do you think about the city? Um, I love playing in Victoria. Um, we uh, being able to go on the ferry. It's uh, it's definitely really cool. Um, when we played against Victoria, they had a really nice rink. They uh, they had a good fan base. They they're extremely classy. Our goalie came back from World Juniors and won a gold medal. Uh, Joel Hofer and they acknowledged him for it. So, um, it was awesome. It was pretty cool that they did that, and it was insane that um how nice the city was what's your favorite place to visit <sighs> like just in general or in the league uh both favorite place to visit generally honestly i don't go to too many places so i go to i go to saskatoon a lot in the summer i'm actually moving there in two weeks so um in the summer i like visiting family there and um in the league, my favorite place that we went was definitely, I want to say either Victoria was fun or Edmonton and that whole Alberta, Saskatchewan road trip. That was definitely a good time as well. Favorite rink burger? burger. Um, I'm more of a hot dog guy. So I honestly, I didn't eat one burger this year in the WHL. Um, but if you want to talk about hot dogs, I can give you a ranking of every the best i would love that <laughs> okay it went Kelowna. this is how this is how you know i've been scratched a lot by the way Kelowna has the best hot dogs then lethbridge then spokane and then who else was it portland's i'm sorry portland but the hot dogs there suck so um there's actually yeah there's my top three when it comes to Regina, maybe we don't get we don't get to try them because he's he's playing. Yeah, maybe. Um, we didn't go to Regina this year. Regina came to us, and we beat them. I think it was like nine three. So I think uh, we'll be in Regina next year. So you boys can come out to a game. Yeah. Yay. And hopefully we can meet you personally. Like, like, oh, like, 100%. No, yeah. no problems uh, there. The, this coming season, we hope you don't get to try the hot dogs in Regina. Yeah, same here. Uh, Regina will be a game that's uh, closest to my family, so um, I, don't, I don't really think I'll be scratched for that game. Yeah. Uh, um, Brendan Man Manler. Brendan Ulmer. Brendan Ulmer's wants to buy your jersey and favorite rink you played at or one you want to play at favorite rink i've played in i definitely gonna say the moda but surprise i was scratched against edmonton so they get to play in the rogers arena where the oilers play so um next time we go there i'd definitely like to play in edmonton but at the same time i want to play in saskatoon regina and musha just so all my family can come watch just because someone said in the chat, do you have a PS4? What kind of gaming system do you have? If you have one. Xbox, baby. Woo! Us do, us do. Good. Xbox Good choice. One. Pardon me? Xbox, Xbox One S. S. X hey, yep, same here. That's... No, we have the um, exchange usernames. Later. We'll Later. Leave the messages. DMs. The, Sounds good. Via DMs. We actually, we actually, um, almost have, uh, Cody Ferjaro's, uh, Xbox username. So it's, really? It's, That's it's, awesome. It's pretty awesome. We, we're probably gonna get, like, by the time, um, uh, COVID-19 is done, we're gonna have, like, a mil, like, a bunch of, uh, usernames. Username. That's awesome. Yeah, that's definitely exciting. Um, I haven't been playing too many video games lately. I've kind of been playing NHL with my brother kind of here and there because uh, I've just been working on this clothing line. But if we definitely want to play, uh, if we definitely want to play a game of NHL once uh, 
during this whole COVID thing, we can definitely make that happen. Yeah. Roddy Ross said Pat's shirt. And, and yeah, Roddy, uh, Roddy yeah. just got traded about an hour ago to the Pats, so... Uh, I have this shirt. Good notice. Yeah. It's very unnoticeable. There's your guys' new star goalie, by the way. Woo! He was drafted to the Flyers, so... Okay, what is keeping you busy during COVID-19 besides TikTok? <laughs> um, my clothing line, definitely. Um, I've been working on that ever since I got home. Um, it's been a lot of orders, so I have to kind of keep up with that. So, yeah, definitely uh, keeping up with the orders of my clothing line. Actually, give me one second. Oh. All right. Roddy has a great goalie coach with Rob Montaigne, who coached me in three, four, five. Really? Yeah, he did. I, hey, maybe awesome. you'll be the next Roddy Ross, hey? I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. Let's Robbie not bring back Ross. flashbacks from novice when you played goal. The one game, and you let in 13, and never swore to never play goal again. Yeah, and I almost... Uh, and I even left the net for a little bit. <laughs> Aggressive goal. I love it. And literally just smacked it away, and the ref told me not to do that. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you for letting us into your home, and thank you for your time. Yeah, thanks for having me, boys. It was fun. Yep. Yeah. Bye. All right. Have a good day, boys. You yeah. too. <laughs>